Hello everyone, it's Jin Teacher again from Reading Town. It's good to see you. Let's take a look at today's article. Our article today is entitled, World's First Printed Bridge. So printed is when you take it from a machine and it makes a copy in paper. So in Korean we say that 인쇄, right? So it's printed and we know what a bridge is. In the picture we see bridge, that's what you cross to get over some type of water, like a river or a stream. So we see bridges there, but they're not normal bridges. They've been printed. So let's find out more about it in our article. Let's read it together. It says 3D printing is a technological revolution that has changed the way people produce objects. So let's go back. 3D is three dimensional. That means it's not flat, right? Like paper, but it's something that has a full shape that you can touch. So that's three dimensional. Printing, and we said that's inze, so that's when you take it out of a machine that makes a copy for you, and then it comes out usually in paper, uh, is a technological revolution. So technological, it has to do with technology like machines, right, or gadgets. Uh, and revolution is a huge change, a big change. So it's a huge technological change that has changed the way people produce objects. So produce means to make, and objects are things that we use. So 3D printing has changed the way that people make things, right? Such as bridges. We've never done that before. The technology or the ability to make something new using technology is part of a process known as addictive manufacturing, which builds layers to create a 3D solid object from a digital model. So let's take a look back. So a digital model means it's only on the computer, right? It's nothing that we can physically hold or touch. So there's a model in the computer that someone has designed, and because of the 3D printing, it's known a process means step, right? It's a step known as addictive manufacturing. So what is addictive manufacturing? Manufacturing means to make in large amounts, so addictive means you see that word add, right? So you keep adding onto it and it's manufacturing which is making. So it builds layers, right? So different levels on top of each other and they create solid objects. Solid means something that you can touch, something that's hard and solid things from a model that they designed first in the computer. So first you design something on the computer, you think of what you want, how you want it to look and then through a new technology known as addictive manufacturing, you can build a 3D model of the same thing that you put in the computer. And it puts layers and layers and layers of solid things that are hard uh, together and then it makes a three-dimensional model that you can actually use. It can hold it in your hand. As products can be made in almost any shape and size, 3D printing has been used to produce a wide range of products from toys to prosthetic body parts. So because this 3D printing, you can make so many different things, you can make a wide range, right? You can make many different kinds of things, products, from toys to prosthetic body parts. So prosthetic means uh, it's not real, uh, but if you, let's say for example, you lose your leg in an accident, then you need a plastic leg or something to help you uh, as if you had your old leg that you can walk, that's called the prosthetic leg. Uh, so we see a lot of soldiers who come back from war. Uh, if they have some body part uh, that was removed, then they use a prosthetic body part. So those are things that you can make even with this 3D printer, right? Very interesting. So you can make any size, any shape using this 3D printing and you can make many different products or many different objects or things, okay? In December last year, the world's first 3D printed bridge was unveiled in Madrid. So unveiled means it was shown, right? So they let everybody know, right, that this is something that they were able to do using the 3D printing. And that was last December, about um, almost a year ago, right? So it says here, uh, Madrid is a city in Spain at 12 meters long and 1.75 meters wide, the structure was designed by the Institute of Advanced Architecture of Catalonia. So here, it was the Institute of Advanced Architecture. So architecture is the study of designing buildings, right? So here in uh, Spain, in Madrid, that's when uh, a university in Catalonia was able to design the first 
uh, structure, which means the first kind of bridge or the first uh, land, uh, landmark that we can use, right? Something that was designed and built. Uh, design team leader Arietti Marco Polo said, in traditional architecture, uh, architecture, there is a lot of waste material which you cannot remove. However, with 3D printing, you can control where the material is deposited. So usually when you design something, there's a lot of things that you have to cut out or uh, throw away. So especially when you design a bridge using natural tools like bricks and cement and things like that, there may be a lot of parts that you would have to cut out, right? Because it doesn't quite fit or extra material that you don't need. Uh, however, it says with 3D printing, you can control everything. You can control the exact size so that it's very easy when you put it in, right? So there's nothing to waste. So where you deposit the material means where you put it in, right? So if you look at the bridge, here's another picture of a bridge. If you use real cement, sometimes uh, these blocks, it might be too big so that you might have to cut some and then throw it away. So there's a lot of waste, right? Or in other words, garbage, what you have to throw away. And that could be costly and takes a lot of time. But when you do 3D printing, you know the exact measurement, you know the exact size that you want because you do it everything digitally and then it gets copied exactly that way. So there's nothing to throw away. So that's a very good thing about 3D printing when it comes to designing things. Uh, it says an institute source said, also said, the computational design also allows to maximize the structural performance being able to dispose the material only where it is needed with total freedom of forms. 3D printing is considered the future of construction. So construction means building. So 3D printing, they think it's the future of building. Why? It says uh, the computational design. So computational design means that you design it through the computer using exact measurements. Right? So you do it on the computer and it allows you to maximize structural performance. So maximize means get the most out of, right? So not wasting anything. So you're getting the best. So you're making the, uh, the most use of structural performance. Structural performance means it's strong enough, right? It's not going to fall down. So you're getting the best use uh, of this bridge. You're not wasting material. Uh, you're not having weak sections, but everything is the best that it could be because of computational design, meaning that you're designing it through the computer. So the computer has the technology to check that your measurements are correct, that it's going to be strong, that the bridge is even and strong all throughout. So because it's being designed like that, you're maximizing or getting the most out of its uh, performance and how well it can hold up right? The strength of the bridge. So being able to dispose the material only where it is needed. So you also uh, know exactly where the materials are needed. So you're not wasting anything. So you know what part of the bridge needs the most help. Um, and you're not doing that when you're building it with cement and blocks. So you're not constantly having to add or take away, but because you're doing it already in the computer design, there's nothing to waste. It's very efficient, meaning that there's nothing to waste and it's uh, the best performance that you can get from this bridge. So that's why they believe that doing it 3D is the best way and also the future of building. Very interesting. I didn't know that you can uh, print an actual bridge, but I've seen the 3D printing. Uh, people have been talking about it for the past couple of years and they can actually even print uh, 3D keys, right? So you can print all different kinds of things and now they're doing it in a much bigger scale. So they can build a bridge. Maybe they can build a building next, right? So as the technology uh, improves, we're going to see many different things that are created three-dimensionally through printing. Very interesting article. Let's take a look at our comprehension questions for today. Here's another picture of a 3D printed bridge. Right? So it's not that big, but they're going to start getting bigger and bigger as the technology gets better. Right? So let's look at A. It says, where is the world's first 3D printed bridge? So where was the first one? I said it's somewhere in Spain and the, the place where they studied it is also located in Spain, but it was first created in Madrid. So if you're a big soccer fan, there's a lot of uh, great soccer teams in the city of Madrid. So Madrid is a famous place where they're starting to uh, use the first 3D printed bridge. So who designed the bridge? So we said that it was uh, an academy, right? So it was an institute. So what institute was it? Where was it? Also in Spain. 
It was the Institute of, of Advanced Architecture of Catalonia. So we said architecture is the, is the study of designing buildings and Catalonia is also a city. How long and wide is the bridge? Do you remember the measurements? It's not that small, but it's not that large. So it's 12 meters long and 1.75 meters wide, right? So that's quite big, okay? So it's nothing that's small. So we know when we usually print, it's usually a paper, but this is much bigger than that. It's three dimensional and you can even make it 12 meters long, right? You can print out different parts and then piece it together, kind of like a puzzle. Let's look at the, the next questions. Let's fill in the blank. This 3D printing is a technological something that has changed the way people produce objects. So we said produce objects means make things. So 3D printing is a technological, it's a, tech, it's a technology based what that has changed. So it's a huge change. And we said a huge change is a revolution, right? So it's a technological revolution and it's going to change the future of how we make things. So maybe one day we can even have a 3D printed car. Very interesting. Uh, B, in December last year, the world's first 3D printed bridge was something in Madrid. So that means they showed it, they made it and showed it to people. So what was that word that we learned? It was unveiled, right? It was revealed or unveiled. So veiled means covered and unveiled means you uncover it. So if you uncover something, that means you're showing it to everyone. So it was unveiled in Madrid last year. And the last question, at 12 meters long and 1.75 meters wide, the structure was blank by the Institute of Advanced Architecture of Catalonia. So what did they do? The structure was what by the Institute? And we said that it was designed. So we said architecture is the designing of buildings and structures, and that's who designed the first 3D printed bridge. So as we look at today's article, I hope that you uh, found this very interesting because it's going to be more and more uh, used in the future. So we can see printed airplanes, printed cars, printed trains, printed tracks, printed everything, right? So this is a new technology, very interesting, and they're starting to use it in Spain and we'll see it in America and Korea and beyond. So this is a very interesting uh, article and it shows us how much our technology has come. So we will see greater and uh, more interesting designs and buildings and even structures made by 3D printing. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's article and learned a lot. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye, everyone.